I've seen many people online talking about how they just can't seem to grasp the concepts of programming. Many people completely shy away from it because it looks foreign or because of a bad experience with programming in the past, but I firmly believe that anybody can learn to code. In this video, I'll specifically be focusing on learning to code in C-sharp with the Unity game engine, but many of these general practices can be applied to other languages and other engines. I'm going to try to keep this video somewhat brief, but I will link to lots of more specific tutorials that will teach you about how to do more specific things from other people, so you can sort of think of this video as a hub for learning your fundamentals. So let's just start this off with a few basic principles of programming. Right off the bat, I feel like the most important thing to grasp is that you never stop learning. Programming is like learning a language, but instead of talking to people and being social, you are talking to a computer and giving it instructions to make Among Us. Good for you. I am still learning ridiculously simple things every day, but I've been able to function in programming pretty well for the last two years. I made a whole game after all, it's just that I've gotten a lot better over this time. Other than that, just never be afraid of looking up a question or looking at the API, and I'll go into more detail on how to use the API in just a bit. But just remember, Google knows basically everything and having 40 tabs open to Stack Overflow is industry standard. Another important principle is that it is almost always best to avoid repeating code and instead try to use abstraction. That basically means that say I have two very similar segments of code. Instead of leaving them like this, I should instead take this code and make it into a function with parameters that allow for slight alterations. This makes your code easier to read and much easier to expand. Say in the future I want to add another similar bit of code. So I just take this function, expand it a bit, and it works great. Here is a simple tutorial for the specifics of how functions work. On the same note as the last principle, readability is also very important. Always design your code so that anybody else who isn't familiar with the project could look it over and be able to tell what is going on. Even if you are just a team of one, yourself a few weeks in the future might as well be a different person. And so you want to be able to come back to the script and be able to understand what pass you was trying to do. The best ways to do this are just by using comments, separating different parts in the functions, and separating scripts into multiple scripts. Don't build your health script into the base player movement script like I did, because you'll eventually probably have to separate them anyways. Here is a fantastic video that covers not only code organization, but also general project organization. This is the first time I'm mentioning him, but Tarot Dev is a great channel for people learning Unity. I'm going to be linking to several more of his videos during this, but just know that his channel is a great resource and I learn new stuff from him all the time. This video is sponsored by the generous people at SNHU. Given that you are watching this video, there is a good possibility that you are interested in making your own video game. It's hard to look at a game you like and not feel some inspiration to make your own. Maybe you have a unique idea for a mechanic or just a story you want to tell. That story heavy, open world tax filing simulator in your brain is just begging to be made. What if you had the knowledge and experience to make your game a reality and to turn it into an actual career with opportunities for growth? If that sounds exciting to you, then let me tell you about Southern New Hampshire. Hampshire University, who is sponsoring this video. SNHU has one of the largest accredited non-profit online degree offerings in the country. They feature over 200 degree programs focused on getting you started in or advancing yourself in a career that you'll love. But let's talk about SNHU's game development program. In this program, you'll learn how to create realistic, dynamic gameplay experiences with game AI, game physics, 2D and 3D graphics, and interface design. You'll also learn computer programming languages like C++, C Sharp, and Java. And you'll learn 3D modeling and texturing with GameR software. Courses are taught by industry experts who will teach you how to research, develop, and contribute to advances and trends within the field of game programming. All of SNHU's programs are extremely flexible, and there are no set class times allowing you to work when and where you want. If you started college and never finished, SNHU will let you transfer up to 90 credits so you don't have to start over. That's up to 75% of a bachelor's degree and up to 33% of a master's degree. SNHU is radically affordable. Their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation and they haven't increased in 10 years. So if you want to switch to a career in game dev, go to snhu.edu slash levin. Link is in the description. And thank you to SNHU once again for sponsoring this video. The most important part of learning is learning how to learn. No seriously, being able to learn what you know that you don't know is one thing, but being able to find and learn things that you don't know that you don't know is even more important. Those unknown unknowns are sometimes key to achieving a goal or performing a complicated task that you need to do. First off, it's worth repeating that you can probably find anything you need just by looking it up. There's a good possibility that you just looked up this video to find it anyways. But a bit smoother way to do things is by using the Unity API. API stands for... Uh... Uh, application, uh... Doesn't matter, point is, everything you could ever want to know about Unity is on here, except inverse kinematics and apparently wheel colliders for some reason. 
There are lists of properties, methods, and operators for everything, and there are also great descriptions, parameters, and examples. Seriously, it took me way too long to get familiar with this great tool, and being able to use it well is the key to finding most of the answers you need in Unity as well as most other applications. But the API probably won't help you find out about those things you have never heard of. So where do you inform yourself of these sorts of things? Well, I have three resources that I know of. First off, game dev channels like TaroDev, yeah, I'm missing him again, cover all sorts of concepts like lurping, events, and more. Just scrolling through his channel and clicking on some of the things that look helpful and that you have never heard of is a great way to find many concepts. Secondly, I actually have a video where I went over a bunch of the things that I missed when I started Unity. It covers a lot and I hope it can be helpful for people. Finally, if there is anything that I miss in this video and you want to help some beginners and possibly me learn about some more useful tips and concepts in Unity, then feel free to comment them down below. So hopefully the comment section of this video itself can become sort of a resource for beginners to learn stuff from. By the way, I just released my game Couch Combat on Steam a few weeks ago. It is a split screen multiplayer FPS I made in Unity and is $10. It has a unique modifier system where modifiers are added every round and the game increases in chaos with synergies between these different modifiers. If you are interested in helping out the channel on getting the game, then there is a link in the description. So now I'm going to go to address the main point of this video and why I believe that some people simply can't get anywhere with programming or Unity in general. They simply make the same mistakes over and over and don't learn. If this is you, then don't worry. You just need to make a more conscious effort to learn from mistakes and seek out solutions to issues you face. It doesn't come naturally to everyone. You need to learn how to use a scientific method to solve your problems. So here's my advice. A tutorial that covers the entire process of making a game is likely not what you need. I followed a lot of tutorials, and while many are very helpful, Following the ones that lead you all the way through a project can lead you to autopiloting through making the game and not really understanding what you are doing. I think it is great to maybe follow a series like this for your first project in order to learn the basics of navigating through Unity and stuff like that. But then after that, just challenge yourself to make something simple without a tutorial. A good example is to challenge yourself to build a basic top-down shooter. Just take it one step at a time. First learn how to get input and how to make a box move around the screen. If you don't know how to do something, like get input, then just look up how to do that specific thing. Then after you get movement working, you can figure out how to shoot a bullet. And maybe whenever you look up how to do that, you can learn about how to instantiate objects and apply forces to them and stuff like that. And then you can learn about collision checking, destroying objects, loading scenes, and more as you go on. But in order to use the scientific method, you just have to figure out the specific thing that you are having problems with. Then think about how you could solve that problem. Then try and fix that problem. If it works, then great. And if not, then reevaluate and try again. And that leads right into this final part of the video, where I'm going to go over debugging. Unfortunately, debugging is a big part of game development, and you have to be able to find bugs, document them, and ultimately fix them. Finding bugs is a difficult process, as every program ever has some bugs, and you have to figure out which ones are worth fixing. Personally, I have found that playtesting my game with my friends allows me to find bugs that I would have never found on my own. But there are some people online who are just ridiculously good at finding bugs. If you can find some people on Discord or even hire them to help you find bugs, then it is worth it. And also, those are called playtesters. It's literally a job. You need a good tool to write down bugs, and personally, I just use the Notes app on my phone to jot them down and later move them to my planner on Trello. Trello is a great free productivity platform that I've been using for forever that lets you make and arrange tasks. Basically, just always remember to write down a bug if you aren't planning on fixing it as soon as you find it. And finally, the hardest part is fixing the bug. There are so many different ways that bugs can happen that it's pretty much impossible for me to address them all, but there are several practices that can help in fixing them. First off, just make sure that you actually understand what your code is doing. Comments help, that way you can more easily find issues and mistypes. Also, liberal use of the debug log function will help you find where your code gets hung up on, and when something isn't working for me, I'll make debug logs that just say when a bit of code is reached in execution. That way I can see if it gets messed up in an if statement or something. And I can also use them that print out helpful data, like the values of variables at certain times. Here's another great video over debugging. And thanks for watching, this has been a different video than usual for me. If there is anything I missed, any criticism you have for this video, or anything that you would like me to cover in the future, then please comment it down below. Thank you to my Patreons, it means a lot. If you would like to support me, then the best way to do that is just by buying my game on Steam. Bye.